performed a tactical maneuver, causing another deputy to hit him head on, pinning him. It would take three officers to take the man into custody as he tried to resist arrest. Police say they recovered a gun and a bag of meth inside the car. Well, some new information now on a crime story that has captivated America. Stephen Avery, the focus of the Netflix series Making a Murderer, which debuted in December, is fighting once again for his freedom. He's filed two motions this week, requesting his release from prison. Avery claims a search warrant used on his property was invalid. He also says a juror pressured others into finding him guilty during his trial. Avery and his nephew are currently serving life sentences for the 2005 rape and murder of photographer Teresa Halbach. Let's bring in the legal panel. Today, Troy Slayton is a criminal defense attorney and a former prosecutor. Yodit Tawalde is a former prosecutor and current criminal defense attorney. Welcome to both of you. It's one thing Thank to you. have all kinds of notoriety, Yodit, and uh, this, this documentary has generated immense amounts of publicity for Stephen Avery, but he also has to have solid legal background or solid legal backing uh, to get these appeals in. Does he have it? You know, one thing that we can't argue with is that Stephen Avery has garnered thousands and thousands of supporters because of this case and this docu-series, but he doesn't need more supporters. What he does need are options, and it seems to be limited at this point with Stephen Avery having filed these new motions in a court on Monday. Now, what he's claiming on uh, one of the grounds is that a juror pressured other jurors into voting for a guilty verdict. Now, Wisconsin law does not allow a juror to testify about deliberation process unless that there are additional information. If there's additional information that's been prejudicial, that's prejudicial to this defendant, and maybe some sort of outside um, influence, that is the only way that this juror can testify about these deliberation processes. So in this in this case, all we know about this juror is that she was pressured into finding this person guilty, and that unfortunately is not enough. Now his second claim is about a search warrant that these police officers used to gather all of this incriminating evidence against him, including the key that was found in his bedroom that belonged to the victim. Now, he's made this argument before in an appeal, and that was already denied back in 2011. So he's running out of options at this point. Ken Kratz, the uh, prosecutor, we got a brief glimpse of him there in the courtroom. Uh, he, he said that one of the things he wishes he had not done, Troy, in this case is sit down for this big pre-trial news conference. He sat down with the sheriff and went into grisly detail about what happened to the victim in this case. It was all based apparently on the confession of uh, Avery's younger nephew who is mentally challenged, shall we say. Is that not enough? I mean, if, if a court goes back and looks at that pre-trial publicity, is that not enough to bring a, a, a new trial? John. Avery was never in danger of getting a fair trial in this case. I mean, with the prosecutor sitting down, not just that time, but they had almost daily briefings uh, revealing, like you said, all the grisly details about the crime scene and about the, when you watch it, what seems like a coerced confession of the very low IQ nephew, Dassey. I mean, it, it seems to me like he was attempting to poison the jury pool from the entire area, really depriving Avery of even the chance of having a fair and impartial jury of his peers. He has a new lawyer also, Yodit, a, a fairly high-powered lawyer from Chicago is going to take up his case, uh, has also apparently filed motions uh, in his case. But again, there has to be background, there has to be backing for it, there has to be some kind of an, a mistake made earlier in the trial process, right? Right, and we have to remember that when a jury renders a verdict and they are going to make that verdict known in court, the court is going to pull that jury. And what that means is that they want to make sure that that verdict is accurate. So they are going to ask each and every one of those individual jurors to confirm that verdict. And that was presumably done. Mm -hmm. So in this case, it seems as though this, this verdict was rendered by law. It, it was legal. And so absent any additional prejudicial information that would surface at this point, I don't see Stephen Avery getting a new trial. All right. Yodit, Troy, thank you. We're going to continue to keep an eye, obviously, on this very controversial case.